What is up, ladies and gentlemen? We are moving on with our Automata Part 2. We're going to continue on with this uh, top-down approach. Now, what I have so far is I have my pieces over here of my box, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to shove this in such a way where it's considered a sub-assembly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this side piece right here, I'm going to click on it. And when I click on it, I'm going to hold down, and I'm going to go over to my bottom piece. And what this does is it kind of creates it as a sub-assembly. We're going to do the same thing with the other side. Click, drag. Now you notice I'm putting text over text because if you click on and you try to put the image over image or I using that visible. So I'm going to hold down on the side text, drop it on the bottom. And then what that does is it creates a sub-assembly. So now when I deselect my bottom piece, it now does the whole box. And so what I'm actually going to do is rename this piece and I'm just going to call it box. So now I officially have a sub-assembly called box. All right, let's move on to the next piece. So now let's start to make the holes in our box. So what I'm going to do is draw a line using the L key on my keyboard. And this allows me to find um, the center of my box easily. Now when you're moving over pieces, things can get pre-highlighted. I'm actually going to deactivate my box, and this allows me to see what I'm doing just a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight, click on this line right here, right click, and we're going to make it a construction line, because I'm not actually going to use it. I'm just using it for reference when I do my extrusion. So I'm going to right click and then hit construction. Now notice the difference between that left line and that right line. I still have something selected. And so if I actually right click over here, I'm still using that original line. And so by not deselecting stuff, you can actually cause yourself to go backwards on what you're expecting to do. So anytime I'm messing with lines, I'm hitting escape key almost after every command, uh, just so that way I know I'm not accidentally doing something uh, downstream. All right, we're gonna hit C for, all, for a circle and then there we go. We know that the dowel rod we're going to use is a quarter inch in thickness. Go to hit finish sketch. Let's make our box active again. And let's extrude this out. Make it a cut. OK and done. Alrighty. Now let's do a new sketch. Let's go top. Uh, what I'm going to do now is zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to draw a line across the middle of my Thomas right here. So if you notice this line right here, as I move down, I get a little symbol. It's that triangle symbol. This tells me it's equidistant. I mean, this point right here is equidistant from the top and the bottom. So that means when I'm drawing this line, I know I am bisecting this top piece. I'm going to right click and hit construction line. Escape, so I'm not using that line anymore. And I'm going to deselect my box. We're going to throw a couple of circles in here. And um, these circles and their dimensions and how far they're spacing are based off your automata. I'm just shooting for symmetry right here. So what I do know is that this distance between here and here is going to be one and an eighth inch. And then I'm actually going to create, using the circular pattern, I'm going to, not the circular pattern, I want the wrong direction, I want the linear, sorry, the rectangular pattern we're going to drag this over and that we know we're going to do four of them and the spacing between them is going to be negative 0.75 so like I said these circles are kind of based off what you're doing with your automata I just know that this is kind of the spacing I'm looking for for mine just to show you guys on how to do this stuff so we're going to finish sketch Let's go ahead and activate my box again. And this allows me to drill my holes. So E on the keyboard. And there we go. We have our holes for our box. And our box is now a sub-assembly. So let's go ahead and deselect the box, actually. And I'm going to create a new sketch. Now this item we're going to be dealing with is going to be our crankshaft. So the diameter of that axle it's going to be a quarter inch dial rod. And we're going to go ahead and extrude this out five inches. 
Now these dimensions I already know, and so you kind of have to use it as you need. All right, so let's go ahead and also, when we're doing that, let's right click, edit feature, actually what I need to do. I forgot to make that a component, nasty habit. So new component from bodies, select the body, click okay. So now we see my crankshaft and my box are two different assemblies. So we'll call this crankshaft. Alrighty. Let's create a new sketch. Let's go ahead and make our handle. Now our handle, for me, I like using this circular design just because it looks a little sleek. I do two circles, connect them with lines, Uh, do my tangent geometric constraint that way those line transitions are smooth and then we need to do two circles one for the handle and one for where the axle is going to go through we're going to hit T on the keyboard for trim and I'm going to trim up some of this geometry and just clean it up a little bit. We're going to go ahead and finish sketch. We're going to extrude this shape out. E on my keyboard. And I'm actually going to go backwards a quarter inch, so negative 0.25. We're going to make that as a new component. Click OK, and then we're done. All right, so this is going to be handle. Alrighty, create a sketch. What I'm going to do now is on this face, we're going to make our handle as well. So I'm going to hit circle, make that a quarter inch, hit finish sketch. I'm going to go ahead and extrude this circle out. Let's do 1.5 inches for that dowel rod. Make this as a new component. We can call this uh, handle as well because it's part of that handle. All right, the last thing we're going to do here is we're going to make a end cap right here for my axle. So I'm going to do a smaller circle, we're going to do a larger circle, finish sketch, extrude this to be a quarter inch. The other direction so let's do a quarter inch you know this direction so negative 0 0.25 and click on new component click OK we're going to call this end cap alrighty so now we got is my crankshaft handle handle well, the second part of the handle and then end cap what I'm going to do now is we're also going to make this a sub assembly so I'm going to drag on handle and I'm going to drag and drop all the pieces that deal with that crankshaft uh, to go with this assembly. So that way I know if I deselect it, my whole my whole assembly, my whole subassembly disappears. Same thing with my box. My whole box disappears and reappears. Alright. Before we can finish wrap it up this video, let's go ahead and make these materials. So what I'm gonna do is I know that this piece and this piece are both going to be made out of the same dowel rod. So I'm going to right click, select both of those, and we're actually going to, uh, let's try that again. We're going to, let's go to my hand, no, there it is, end cap. Right click physical materials. Physical materials pop ups right here. I know my end cap, oh, I clicked the wrong one. My end cap is still going to be made out of. MDF though. So I'm going to find MDF. I'm going to click on MDF for those two pieces right there. I also know that my dowel rod is going to be made out of wood. Uh, most likely some whatever dowel rods you end up finding. Let's do pine for now just so it looks nice. Now if you notice as I'm doing things in this design these materials are being used. Medium density fiberboard, pine and by default everything is made out of steel all right but like we said i don't like how the mdf looks so i'm going to hit a on my keyboard for appearance 
find the MDF, and we're gonna make these two pieces out of MDF. All right, and my crankshaft assembly looks good. Okay, now let's work on the next part of actually assembling these, and we'll call this video done. So I'm gonna make my box visible, and let's go ahead, there we go. These pieces are movable. So what I'm gonna do is click on joint, continue. We know that the end of this is gonna be inserted in that hole. However, it's going the wrong direction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip that axis. And I do also know that I need to bring it out just a hair bit so that end cap can fit on it. So I'm actually gonna move that down a quarter inch. Click OK, and then we're good to go. Let's go ahead and do a, oh, I need to actually go back and fix that. This joint constraint, so we're gonna edit joint, needs to be a revolute. We need it to spin. So under motion, we click revolute, Z axis, and it spins. And you can tell a little bit of texture on that dowel rod, you can tell it's spinning right there. Click OK, and then we're done. We're gonna do joint, we're gonna join the end of that with the end of that. And now the end cap and the axle are gonna be a rigid constraint because we want them to spin together. So make sure that position is, or that motion is going to be rigid. Click OK. Alrighty, and then what we got here so far, we're going to join, uh, let's do the other end of that circle. Let's do this end right here with the end of that. And so what we did is we just mated, or sorry, uh, we joined the two edges of those. It's not on the right side, so we're actually going to flip this. And that looks okay. Again, it's going to be a rigid constraint because we want the handle to spin with the axle. Click OK and then we're looking good. All right, my handle does look a little big, but it's okay, we're gonna keep moving on. We're gonna join the edge of this. Now, as you can tell, my box is now in the way, and so by making it a sub-assembly, we can deselect it and do exactly as we need to. Alrighty, let's make our box active. If we've done this correctly, if I hit right click on that revolute joint and animate the model, the handle spins, the crankshaft spins with it, and the end cap and the handle all work as expected. All right guys, that's gonna be for this video. Sorry I ran a little bit long, uh, but hop on for the next one where I'm gonna build the cams and then insert the cams into the box. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll see you in the next video.